Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to yet another exclusive interview on Breaking the Lines. I am Zach Lowy, and I'm here today with Nuno Gomes. How are you today, Nuno? Hello, Zach. I'm fine. Thank you. Uh, thank you for welcoming me, and uh, it's a pleasure and uh, also a big honor to to talk with you for a, for a brief moment. You're currently in Lisbon. I know that you're going to Qatar in a few days. Overall, how excited are you for this tournament? And, you know, what does it mean uh, for you to, to see the biggest sporting event in the world going to a new continent in Asia? Yes, uh, I'm very excited. Uh, it's the, the countdown already. Uh, we are in less than four or five days to start. And uh, I think uh, there's been in the, in the last couple of weeks uh, a lot of buzzing already for the, for the World Cup. Because uh, after all, uh, it's uh, it's a World Cup that we are talking about, and uh, of course, um, all the the football fans uh, looking forward to for the for the World Cup to start and to to watch uh, good football. And uh, also, in my experience as a as a football player throughout my career, and even before that, when I was a uh, when I was a, a child in my childhood. Um, of course, that uh, these are uh, these are the, the the most important moments for uh, for a football fan in terms of uh, big uh, tournaments. And uh, I think the the, the world uh, will stop for a month to 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 watch and see some uh, some great uh, great football uh, delivered from uh, from the, the the best players in the world and the best the best national teams in the in the world. So regarding the, the question about uh, about uh, being held in, in Qatar, I think it's also a new experience. I think it's um, it's um, it's for us also a, a point of uh, curiosity, but uh, probably for those who never been in Qatar, I, I, I had the chance to to visit Qatar before. Well, uh, I and I I have the chance also to play a World Cup under twenty in Qatar. I will not mention the the, the year <laughs> because it was so long ago in '95. Uh, so I can I can I remember that time in '95, uh, and, and now visiting Qatar, uh, it's a totally uh, different uh, country, uh, different city as Doha is, and um, the, the the develop uh, of all the country it's been amazing in the, in the last 20 30 years. So uh, I, I, I've been there for the Arab Cup and uh, I know that uh, they are ready to, to deliver an excellent uh, World Cup and uh, not only the Qatari people, but also uh, for sure all the fans that are visiting Qatar, um, they, will, they will leave Qatar with uh, great memories and they will remember uh, World Cup 2022 for, for life, for sure. There are going to be a lot of people visiting Qatar for the first time. And what do you think is going to be the, the one thing that uh, they're surprised by in terms of visiting this new country? I think the, the, the of course the all the all the conditions of the of the country uh, in terms of infrastructures, in terms of uh, everything that uh, will support uh, a football fan in order to to be comfortable uh, for for um, for attending the game. The, the the stadiums are uh, truly amazing, uh, and for sure uh, this will be one of the the key uh, comments after after the World Cup uh, about the, the stadiums because they are really they are really amazing and and uh, for sure the players will be will be very glad uh, and happy to play in in, in such uh, stadiums. Uh, and of course, the conditions of the of, of the city of the country uh, to to deliver uh, to deliver the best uh, possible conditions for football fans. Uh, besides the ninety minutes of the game, they will they will deliver, and they, they are very well organized at the moment in order to to deliver uh, a lifetime to to remember. It's going to be the first ever World Cup to be held in Asia and the first World Cup to be held in the middle of the season, obviously going to be held for, from November to December. How do you uh, foresee this mid-season timing uh, affecting the competition? Well, it, it will be, of course, different. 
because uh, for example uh, in the summer world cups when they usually uh, are being held uh, sometimes in in that in, in that uh, summer world cups um, there are a lot of players uh, with a big overload of games you know because after a, a long season um, the players are overload so now in principle uh, play will have players uh, uh, at their maximum of uh, their best condition, uh, condition, physical conditions, and in, in their best physical shape. So, uh, unless of course those who are not, uh, or or uh, they are still uh, recovering from from uh, uh, from some injuries, there there are some some players that are still recovering for for some injuries. But injuries is part of the game. But uh, um, of course, uh, to have the the, the players uh, at their top uh, levels uh, will be uh, different from from the others. So I think it's an advantage um, to 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 have uh, the World Cup now, and uh, and also uh, for example, there will be no long travels uh, before and uh, and between games and after the games. Uh, because usually uh, sometimes World Cups are held in different countries or in in a big country, uh, so uh, players have to travel to in order to play uh, and then come back to to the hotel. So in this case, there will be no 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 long travels, and um, I think in in physical terms, uh, I think is much better for 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 the players, of course, and for us. Uh, for, regarding the quality of the of the game, you had the chance to play in two World Cups for Portugal. Overall, what was it like to represent your country in the World Cup, and how would you compare it to a high level Champions League match or a Clasico between Benfica and Porto, for example? Well, uh, it's my my own opinion. So uh, for me, uh, growing up. Uh, watching uh, on TV uh, the World Cups, um, it was uh, it was uh, also uh, the best moments of my of my childhood and uh, and the the memories that I that I keep have that I still have from from those World Cups uh, were uh, amazing amazing and unforgettable. So I think uh, uh, for me uh, to 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 have the chance to to play a World Cup uh, for for my national team uh, Portugal uh, it was a, a dream uh, coming coming true uh, because for me is the maximum of of a, a professional footballer uh, that the maximum that we can we can achieve uh, so uh, there's in my opinion there's nothing uh, compare uh, to 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 have the chance to play for your own country in a in a in a World Cup in, in the best in the best competition of the world. How is it that Portugal, a nation of ten million people, a country that's the size of Indiana, has been able to make such a massive impact on football in recent years? And overall, what would you say have been the biggest ways that Portugal has changed as a country, both on and off the pitch? Uh, from your childhood in the 80s and 90s to the present day, allowing it to become a footballing powerhouse? Yes, well, uh, I think uh, even if we are uh, a small country, of course, comparing, uh, especially in Europe, compar comparing to, to, other, to other countries in Europe, we are, we are small. Uh, but we always had, uh, we always had uh, good players and we always had talent. Not only players, but uh, also coaches. Uh, if you if you look at some of the Portuguese coaches, they are they are everywhere at the moment uh, working. Um, I think, uh, and also if you if you analyze and if you research uh, about the national team um, before uh, two thousand, uh, we weren't um, that present in, in all the, the the big competitions. Uh, even uh, at the Euro uh, level, uh, we had, uh, I think, 84 and then uh, 96 at Euros. And then in World Cups, we had 66 with uh, Eusebio. Uh, uh, and then we have uh, in Mexico, we had, uh, we ha we've been present in Mexico 86. 
uh, but then we miss uh, uh, the others 92 90 uh, no 90 in in Italy 94 in in, in US and 98 in France and and after that since 2000 uh, until now uh, we've been uh, present in the in the in the last uh, in the final phases of of the the big competition as a Euro or, or World Cup. So I think Portugal, uh, at, at a certain point, of course, some of the rules of the of the of the, the qualifying system have changed. Also, that uh, also it was a benefit for us. Uh, but I think we, we we start to work better on our youth uh, football in our uh, development uh, on the on the youth youth stages. And uh, we we've been uh, having the, the the best results of, of that investment since that that years uh, in our days. And uh, we have great coaches in our youth academies uh, in order to develop the, the the best players. It does seem like the 21st century brought about a new leaf for Portugal, a chance to really establish itself as a top footballing powerhouse. What was it like uh, going from watching Portugal underperform so many times as a kid, as a fan, to playing with the Seleção and having the chance uh, to to get Portugal to a new level? Well, it was it was a uh, uh, an amazing uh, ride, uh, and it was uh, uh, first of all a, a proudest a proudest moment of my of my career to. To be able to to play uh, for uh, at top level of our national team, uh, to be to be captain of the national team also, and um, of course it was uh, the, the uh, achieving the, the the dream of a, of a childhood. You know, um, I was dreaming about that those moments uh, watching TV at my hometown when I was a kid watching watching. Um, some of the greatest players in Portugal in, in uh, Euro 84. Uh, I mentioned already the World Cup in 86. Um, and of course, dreaming about one day uh, myself to be to be present in the in the, in the final stage of uh, of a World Cup. Uh, it was it was a dream for me, and uh, to to uh, to have the chance to fight for for titles with with our uh, national shirt. Uh, to be close to achieve some some of those titles, of course, we we never won a World Cup. I hope that uh, they uh, will come will come soon. Uh, uh, I hope uh, in Qatar. Uh, but of course, uh, to have the chance to to play for for our national team for me was as, it was al always the, the 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 biggest achievement of of my career. Portugal taking on South Korea, Uruguay, and Ghana as they look to win their first ever World Cup. Overall, what do you think of the Celestials' chances in Qatar? Well, it's it's of course I I put Portugal on on the on the you know on on among uh, some teams that, uh, in my opinion, are favorites, uh, and uh, and of course uh, I. Not only because I am Portuguese, but because I, in my opinion, if we, if we look at uh, uh, the the Portuguese squad, um, you will find uh, amazing players and uh, players that are performing at uh, at the top level in in in, uh, in top teams uh, among among the Europe. Um, so I, I think uh, in overall, uh, comparing to other to other national teams, in my opinion, we are better, but. Uh, I know that uh, even in uh, as a, as a uh, experienced player, I know that uh, to be favorite uh, before the matches doesn't doesn't mean that you will win the game. So the, the players they will have to 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 perform well, and they they will have to 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 have this idea in mind that okay we are favorites, but. Uh, the other team, uh, they they will fight uh, ninety minutes for 
for, for the victory. And uh, you know that in football, uh, anything can happen during 90 minutes and a lot of uh, big surprises. We, 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 we watch it uh, all the time in, also in, in big tournaments as, as a World Cup um, that in theory, uh, some of the favorites are, uh, uh, are going home uh, sooner than, than we thought. So the players will will for sure be looking forward to perform on the on the biggest on their biggest stage, and uh, uh, and I I think uh, that to that we have great chances to 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 uh, to to move forward after the, the the group stage. But of course Uruguay is a strong, a very strong team. Um, South Korea it's coached by a Portuguese, so he knows uh, very well. Uh, our football. He was uh, already uh, the Portuguese national coach uh, in in a World Cup in Brazil, for example, and um, and uh, Ghana. Uh, they have they have good players, and uh, it's all it's always a surprise. The Africa team. We know uh, that they are very good, so they will look also to 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 create uh, their chances to 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 do well. So. Uh, the mindset of the players will will have to be um, at their at their top level, and they they will have to be focused on uh, on each game. You scored four goals in the European 2000 European Championships, yeah. which I believe was kind of your breakout tournament in uh, for for Portugal. What was this tournament like for you as a player? Well, for me, it, it was my first. <laughs> it was my first big competition, so. It was all, always uh, uh, important, um, you know, because at, at, even at that time in 2000, uh, for a young player, uh, wasn't easy to, to achieve the, the, the first national team. So that, that, uh, that tournament, uh, I scored my first goal uh, for, for, for the national team. Uh, for the first national team, even if I, okay, I was uh, I was lucky uh, enough to 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 be present in all, in all the the stages of of uh, the youth development. Uh, I started as an under 15 uh, until the under 20. I I went through all uh, the, the 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 development career of of a young footballer. So I had the luck to 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 play for Portugal. Um, a lot of times in the, in the youth national teams, but I, I reach uh, when I reach uh, the, the the first team, I already have twenty two or twenty three years old, uh, and now it's different. Uh, a young player with seventeen, eighteen, um, if they are uh, good enough and if they have quality, they 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 will play. They, there's no such as uh, oh you are young you are not ready no if they deliver if they are ready uh, they will go into the pitch so of course for me it was important to 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 play that that tournament because it was the first uh, I scored my first goal and uh, it was also a big change for my, my career after that that tournament. Yeah, and I think that's that's one thing you mentioned, uh, especially with your former club Benfica, giving plenty of young talents like Antonio Silva, João Felix, Renato Sanchez, uh, opportunities in the first team. Do you feel like there's been a mentality shift in, amongst Portuguese teams in that we don't need to just play experienced players. We can also give these young, talented players who are ready uh, for a chance in the first team. Yes, of course, Portuguese Portuguese teams had had all, always the 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 um, you know the, the, they they always find find the best way in order to develop a young a young talent and and, and to put put them in the, in the in the in the highest level of uh, professional football here in Portugal. Sometimes because in the past uh, maybe some of the teams. Um, in order to to uh, to have some some uh, uh, some investments in, in in the youth, uh, they 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 were forced to they are sometimes they were forced to put uh, the young players because they 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 didn't have uh, 
uh, resources, economic resources, they're high in order to, to go abroad because in the past, a lot of teams in Portugal, they only looked uh, to, 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 to recruit players uh, abroad. Uh, but but then it came it came the the, the, the time when when the clubs they they start to look uh, inside uh, and they start to 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 find a way to, to better develop their 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 um, their young players and uh, and the results uh, arrived. Uh, I think at the moment uh, if the players are ready at 17 18. Uh, also, the mentality of uh, of the coaches and, and of the people who work for 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 the clubs uh, have changed uh, uh, in order to to give the chance to 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 these young young kids to 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 perform and to to show that to show themselves. Uh, Antonio Silva, of course, it's one of the uh, examples that in in uh, we had, uh, and you mentioned Renato Sanchez also that in in uh, in, in a in a year. In a season, he totally changes his life. He starts in the under nineteen at the beginning of the season, and uh, and he went to the B team, to the first team, and to the national team, uh, and uh, winning the the Euro Cup in two thousand sixteen. Everything in in the same in the same season, you know. So and after the, he he got he he, he was sold, transferred to to Bayern Munich. So um, I think uh, the players that uh, are coming to, from the from the youth teams in Portugal, not only in Benfica, um, because I will not be even if I'm a Benfica uh, big fan, I will not be fair uh, not mention also the uh, the other teams because Porto and and Sporting they work very well also in, in the youth and Braga in the in the recent years uh, is doing an excellent job also. You actually had a chance to uh, live in each of those cities, Porto, Lisbon, Braga. Uh, <laughs> I had the chance to to ask an player, Nuno Santos, this same question. But having spent time in Porto and Lisbon, which city do you prefer? Uh, what would you say are the biggest differences between the two? Which <laughs> city has the well, best Francesinhas? <laughs> oh, okay. If you mention Francesinhas, Porto, of course... <laughs> as, as as the best Francesinhas, okay. and uh, and of course I'm from I'm from north of Portugal. Uh, my hometown is Amarant, uh, near near Porto, uh, like half an hour, forty five minutes from from Porto. Uh, I used to live in Porto when when I played for Boa Vista uh, since my fourteen years old until twenty one when I got transferred to Lisbon. So I'm living in Lisbon. Actually, I'm I'm not living in Lisbon. Is is in a city near Lisbon, Cascais. Um, but I, I'm living here since '97. So, of course, uh, I'm used to Lisbon and Cascais, and uh, uh, I will not change my life now at the moment. But I miss uh, my hometown and uh, uh, everything when when I can. Uh, I, I visit because it's a small town, but it's very, it's very beautiful. I, I, you can, you can, uh, you you will see when you when you have the chance to visit Amarant. Uh, but uh, uh, I think that it's uh, Porto and Lisbon. They are different cities, but uh, uh, in, in 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 their way, uh, beautiful. Uh, Porto is very is very beautiful. Is it's it's uh, the the even the the um, the old town of Porto. Uh, it's also very, very, very beautiful, and uh, it's well uh, organized and uh, uh, by the sea also uh, with a river, so it has everything. Uh, and and Lisbon is, is I think is uh, it, it's Lisbon. It's it's beautiful. It's uh, I I think Lisbon in, in these days uh, are are uh, one of the best European cities. Uh, with uh, and you can see if you go to walk to Lisbon, you you see tourists from everywhere. A lot of a lot of people from abroad and foreign people living and choosing Lisbon to to live. Um, it's also it's also uh, a nice uh, uh, visit card uh, to 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 show uh, abroad that uh, uh, we are hosting a foreign and and, and uh, there's a lot of tourists in, in the city. And um, I think it's very cosmopolitan, so it's a uh, it's uh, one of the best places in Europe to 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 spend to spend holidays and to visit for sure. 
After seven years at Boavista, you left for Lisbon, scored 60 goals in 101 appearances for Benfica over three seasons. What was it like to make the step up at uh, 21 years old to one of the biggest clubs in Portugal? And what do you remember from your first chapter at Benfica? Well, I was I was young, and, and uh, at that time it it was a, a big a big change, a big move for me. Uh, Benfica, I, I was coming from Boa Vista, uh, uh, with all the respect uh, for Boa Vista fans, uh, and of course I, I I love Boa Vista still, uh, uh, and I have great memories because uh, Boa Vista helped me a lot to achieve my 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 dream to become a professional footballer uh, but uh, benfica uh, it was totally different and it was in terms of dimension of the club and uh, and for me uh, the first uh, the first days the first weeks uh, everything was was new uh, even if i if i knew most of the of the players of the club because i used to play against them or i some of them uh, they were already uh, more um, colleagues uh, in in the national team um, it was it was a big move and uh, it, it's it, you know when you when you i don't know your own experience but it's it's like when you change a uh, job or you you get a promotion uh, and then in, in the first days you um, you always have you always want to to be to be to be on time or to to arrive earlier than the others in order to to show them that you are that you are prepared for for the task, uh, uh, and it was it was like that. Uh, I was also lucky enough to 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 have uh, with me uh, and uh, in that days at the, at the club people that uh, helped me a lot to uh, to in order to 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 adapt myself uh, uh, in the in the better way and. Uh, uh, and fa in a fast way, uh, a lot of a lot of people working in the club, uh, giving me uh, um, all the all the all the help. So uh, it was uh, even if uh, in terms of uh, um, collective uh, achievements, uh, Benfica wasn't uh, at their at their best moment. Uh, I performed very well in the first three years. And uh, it was it was very good. And of course, after I, I spent uh, in total, I spent 12, 12 years in in the club because um, it, it it's the club that uh, I always uh, uh, dream to 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 play. And and I always uh, had the, the uh, that idea to play in in a big club such as Benfica. And uh, I was feeling at at home. I was feeling happy playing for Benfica. That's why. Um, I I never uh, consider or uh, uh, to 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 change to 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 experience uh, other other clubs. Were you raised a Benfica growing up? Yeah, Benfica. yeah. Well, a lot, a lot of uh, it's a, it's a, it's like I think uh, most uh, most of the fam families in in Portugal. Uh, some of the some of the cousins supporting. Uh, uh, Benfica, others supporting Porto, some others supporting Sporting, <laughs> and uh, of course uh, uh, I was uh, I was um, I was a, a great admirer of uh, some of the the, the best players uh, in Portugal at that time, and uh, I grew up uh, watching them on 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 TV, and of course I was uh, dreaming uh, to become. Uh, a Benfica player uh, when I when I was uh, when I when I grew up. And after that breakout, two thousand euros, you moved to Fiorentina and spent two years there before returning to Benfica. What was your time in Italy like, and why did you decide to come back uh, to Lisbon after such a short time? Well, as I told you, as I told you, I decided to 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 come back because I I always felt very well in in. Uh, in uh, in Benfica, and uh, since I had the chance to choose uh, my my next move, because uh, if you if you remember uh, if you know uh, Fiorentina at that time went to uh, to bank failure, uh, so uh, the club uh, went to um, 
the the players uh, they were free to to leave from the from the club uh, because a lot of a lot of situations happened at that time and uh, since that happened my 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 first thought uh, was uh, always to to see the chance to see the opportunity and to talk with the people uh, from Benfica in order to see if there was any chance to for me to to return because I knew that uh, at Benfica uh, I would be happy uh, and that, that's why I returned because uh, I promised to 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 Benfica directors that uh, they will be uh, the first ones um, who, who who I will meet uh, when I I was uh, returning to Portugal uh, and it, it it happened like that I, I met them uh, I listened to them I, I, we discussed um, my return uh, at, at at the end we we reached an agreement and uh, uh, that's it I, I didn't listen to to no other clubs because my 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 thoughts were uh, into returning to to Benfica because I, I knew that uh, I was I was happy in Benfica. You spent nine additional years at Benfica before spending some time at Braga and Blackburn Rovers. Uh, also worked in a role at Benfica's academy uh, before teaming up with FIFA and in uh, 2019 actually paying a visit to Mozambique uh, to visit areas affected by Cyclone Idai. What was it like to take this trip? to Mozambique. And overall, have there been any other uh, non-profit initiatives that you've been working with uh, with FIFA and any any you'd like to mention? Well, uh, well, actually at the moment, well, uh, at first uh, I would like to say that it's always a, a, a pleasure for me and, and, uh, and, and to, 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 to participate uh, in those uh, visits uh, in order to 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 help um, countries and, and especially children in, in needs uh, and you mentioned Mozambique it, it's also uh, a part of the um, a part of the, the the FIFA initiative it's also Mozambique it's also a, a Portuguese uh, country uh, from from the past that Portugal has some some uh, a lot not some but a lot of uh, a lot of uh, uh, connections of course and uh, a lot of a lot of uh, roots from from the past and um, to be to be to be having the, the opportunity to to, to help uh, those those children that also don't have the the better the better conditions uh, in for their for their uh, development not only as a, as a as a football player but also and most of all as a human being uh, because uh, they were uh, lacking a lot of a lot of conditions for uh, for the for the children to 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 have a normal a normal life um, so for me uh, every time I I, I got I get the, the the invitation from FIFA to uh, to be part of uh, of these kind of initiatives. I I always uh, say present because I I like to uh, I also like to 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 help others and to to visit other countries um, in order to uh, with our with our visibility uh, to raise to raise uh, awareness uh, of uh, of uh, the. The competing uh, authorities, in order to to change, uh, uh, even if it's a small thing, uh, if if we can uh, reach uh, uh, these uh, uh, these institutions that have the power to change things, I think it's uh, it's uh, it's important. And uh, um, our our goal, our goal, our objective is reach when when we can uh, raise awareness. Uh, next to the to to the people that uh, can change uh, these kinds of things, but uh, at the moment, for example, I'm working on a project with FIFA in in uh, it's called uh, Talent Development Scheme uh, that is that is held in 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 the in the federations uh, among among the federations federations that 
had uh, uh, agreed um, to receive um, the help and uh, uh, in in this project, this specific project that is to develop youth football uh, uh, within the, the the federations, and uh, I'm part of a team um, that uh, is working together with some federations in order to 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 promote and to develop. Uh, more opportunities for young young talents of of their own uh, countries, and and, and we uh, we are helping some some federations in order to 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 have uh, a, a long term strategic plan uh, for their uh, youth youth development. I believe that you were still at Benfica when uh, the World Cup was announced to be in uh, being host in Qatar in 2022. What was your reaction at the time? And overall, you know, how do you think that uh, having this World Cup being played in Qatar will will uh, influence and affect football? Well, I think, uh, as I told you at the, at the beginning, I think it's a month that... Uh, um, that uh, people, football fans, uh, will uh, uh, we have the chance again to to uh, to watch some great great football, uh, great national teams. Uh, in my opinion, uh, the place uh, uh, where it's been held uh, for me doesn't count. To tell you the truth, because I just want to see football, uh, and uh, and uh, I know that. Uh, if we are watching a, a, a football World Cup, uh, we will have good football for sure, and we will collect memories for for life. So um, I think it's important at the moment to focus on on football uh, and and let the, the all the national teams, all, all the coach, uh, and uh, of course most of all the the players to focus on, on on try to win um, the, the the great the the greatest tournament in, in football uh, instead of course the other the other the other issues it doesn't mean that uh, the other the other matters or uh, or issues outside football are not important of course they are important and they are of course uh, uh, very very important to discuss but uh, such as for example the the, the reforms that uh, uh, were carried out in Qatar uh, in 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 labor uh, legislation, for example, um, by by the pressure of uh, uh, from FIFA and from the the international uh, community. So I think football um, has also that uh, that um, uh, that weight, no, in in, in other areas of uh, uh, society, uh, and that's why it said that football is uh, it's more than a than a sport. Uh, football a few days before the start of the of the World Cup, uh, football I think has to be the main focus of of our of our attention at this moment, and the uh, the focus and, and our attention must be on football, and the, and the, I think we have to leave the other matters to the to the to the competent uh, authorities. Uh, anyone who loves uh, who loves football will love for sure this World Cup. Uh, like like any other World Cup before. You mentioned uh, FIFA bringing some pressure to uh, create better labor laws in Qatar. Uh, are there any other uh, areas in which FIFA and Qatar, you believe, are going to collaborate either during this World Cup or after uh, in terms of trying to use football as a, a positive force for society? Of course. Uh, of course, that is. Uh, FIFA, FIFA and football... Uh, is not blind, you know, to to these issues in the world. But uh, I think uh, it is a force for for good that uh, it unites people. And I, and I think that uh, FIFA is working uh, very hard in order to uh, to raise awareness also for uh, for all the for all the, the issues uh, around uh, the, the 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 society. Uh, but of course, uh, I think the most important at the moment that. Uh, football fans can focus, and and, uh, and most of all the players, uh, they 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 can focus on on their on uh, what they are doing in Qatar is to play football and to to try to reach their their dream. 
There's a new FIFA initiative called Football Unites the World, where FIFA will be teaming up with various organizations to highlight causes like sustainability. What does this initiative entail? And uh, how do you foresee your role in this uh, initiative, Football Unites the World? We will have uh, uh, a chance, you know, the, to 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 talk about football, and and of course uh, to let to let uh, uh, to let uh, players focus on the on the uh, on the, on their jobs in in the pitch, and um, of course uh, me and and some other some other persons and uh, some other ex footballers, um, we have the chance also to raise awareness. Um, about uh, all the all the issues, and uh, as I told you, the example of Mozambique, um, we 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 can use uh, our our intervention in order to raise awareness and to and to to promote uh, better conditions for 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 the ones that uh, uh, unfortunately still still need. You played in four major tournaments for Portugal, including two World Cups uh, and playing under Luis Felipe Scolari from 2003 to 2008, who announced his retirement uh, from management this week. What was it like to play under a Brazilian manager and what was your relationship like uh, with Felipe? Pau? <laughs> yes, uh, uh, I can. I, of course, if you if you allow me and give me the, the chance uh, to, to send my, my regards to him and to to thank you for all uh, that he delivered in football. Um, it was one of the greatest coaches that I, that I had, uh, not only as a coach, uh, but also uh, as a human being, uh, that I believe that is important also to, in order to be uh, a good coach, uh, you have to be a good human being. So I, I want to uh, thank you uh, in public uh, for, for what he have done to to, to our national team and of course the opportunities that he, that he gave me and uh, it was uh, I think I already answered the, the, the question he was he was a, a very good coach that had the, the um, also the the, uh, the human being side and and the, also the um, the of course he, uh, some of the decisions that that, that he took uh, they weren't very welcome from uh, some people, but uh, when you are a leader, uh, when you are a, a football coach, you have to make decisions. Uh, and and you know that sometimes you are making decisions um, even against your your own, uh, probably your own opinion. But uh, uh, I think in, in his ideas, he always thought first, uh, what is the best for the team? And, and uh, he put uh, always the interest of the of the team in first place. You played in every game in the 2004 Euros as Portugal made it to the final against Greece. What was the vibe like around Portugal with the um, hosting the Euros? And what was the feeling when the referee uh, blew the final whistle in the Estadio da Luz? Well, it wasn't the the the, the best feelings, of course, as you can imagine. Uh, we were uh, well. I will use the word convinced, uh, but not as uh, uh, as uh, arrogant, um, because we knew that uh, 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 it will be difficult to beat Greece because they already beat us in the first game in the first game of the Euro. Um, so we lost twice in that Euro, twice against Greece in the first game and the, in the last. And and of course we knew that um, that they were good, uh, but uh, the atmosphere that we we lived during the Euro and the, after that first uh, um, that first loss against them, uh, from then until the final, um, we were pro progressing very well, and uh, we were very uh, confident. Uh, in order to to win to win the final, and of course, I think we never thought that uh, that hand could happen uh, because we were uh, we were a strong team, we were playing at home, uh, and uh, and uh, uh, we were living a dream. So so uh, uh, it 
we never thought uh, that uh, that uh, we could happen we, we could lose because uh, uh, the things that we were leaving uh, were were uh, amazing and uh, uh, the only the only way to 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 end that that tournament was to be to be champions oh but uh, uh, of course in football uh, there's uh, there's always uh, surprises and i think it will happen in the future for for sure uh, even after uh, after some some years we we won in france uh, playing in france against france in the final so uh, football has this has this uh, these circumstances that we we, we cannot um, predict what uh, uh, what will happen but of course we we were very um, very sad because it was uh, very bad for us to 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 lose at home uh, after that month where portugal uh, was uh, 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 anthem to 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 football because all, all the all the country was uh, living a dream uh, of uh, uh, the chance to become uh, Euro champion. Two years later, you played in your second World Cup uh, and a World Cup that would see Portugal face off against the Netherlands in a match which saw two red cards handed out to either team. What was the environment in the dressing room like after this insane match? Yes, it was. It was a, a very insane, uh, insane match. Not usually. Uh, but of course we won the game at the end we were happy because we won and we went through uh, but of course we were not happy uh, with the, all the all, all the all the things that happened during the game and all the all the you know the the fights and the the the, the also the some wrong decisions about um, from the referee but uh, at the end we were happy because we we won it and the uh, uh, and that was the most uh, the most important. After retiring from football, you were appointed director of Benfica's football campus, where you'd spent four years before leaving in 2017. What was it like to transition from playing football to having an office job? And how would you describe your role uh, within shaping uh, Benfica's academy? Well, uh, I think it's important for a, for a football player to... Uh, in order to to better uh, fulfill their life uh, after football, because it's also it's all it's always I believe uh, at least for me was uh, um, uh, a difficult time and moments when when you finish your your football career because uh, uh, I knew that I was finishing the best lives of my. Oh, of my life, you know, uh, for me, uh, those were the best years uh, of my life. Um, and of course, I hope one day I can change my opinion and, and tell and tell you that uh, some other years are uh, were more uh, better than 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 those. But I don't believe it will happen because uh, to be the chance to 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 become a football player. And, and to realize the dream of a, of a child, uh, I think those were the best times of my of my life. Of course, uh, you, you need to prepare, and and nowadays you have a lot of a lot of uh, awareness uh, uh, what goes around you, and um, that help you also to to prepare better your your life after after career uh, and to find out. Uh, what you want to do after after your career, I, and I knew from 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 uh, uh, from early that uh, I, I wanted to 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 stay connected to football uh, uh, in 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 the area of sports management. Uh, so for me, uh, at the first, uh, it was difficult because I was close to the players and close to the pitch. Uh, but I couldn't play. <laughs> but uh, uh, I think it goes with the with the with the with the time passing, and you get used to a to a, to a dif different life. Uh, and then it, it depends 
how involved are you in your next uh, next job so uh, I, uh, and i was very involved in, especially in the in the uh, in the youth academy so i didn't have time to think about my time as a football player because i was working almost 24 uh, for 7 days one last question um you know we're going to have a lot of players such as Lionel Messi, Cristiano Ronaldo potentially entering their final World Cup. We're also going to be seeing a lot of young players uh, playing in their first ever World Cup. What is your piece of advice to those players? Well, you mentioned, uh, I will grab that, that you mentioned at the first, that Ronaldo, Messi, uh, I will have also probably Modric, uh, Benzema, uh, Lewandowski, um, and at least these five, I, I believe, uh, if I'm not wrong, over the Pepe. last... Uh, Pepe. Yeah, Pepe also. But I, I will mention uh, uh, the ones that won the best player in the world in the, in the the over the last 15 years. I think these five have been chosen the best players in the world uh, for the, in, the, in the recent years. So I think, uh, well, in principle, because I think um, they all have uh, more than 34 years old, I believe. So I think, <laughs> in principle, uh, it will be uh, for them the last World uh, Cup, you know. Um, and I think, therefore, is a unique opportunity to to enjoy uh, their talent for us football fans. Uh, of course, you have uh, Mbappe and Neymar uh, also that uh, they they for sure. Uh, are among the, the players that we are looking forward to, to to watch. But these ones will have for me, of course, Mbappe and also Neymar, I think they will have the chance to 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 participate in, in, in others' uh, World Cups. Uh, but uh, for the young players, uh, what what kind of advice? I think it's to live to live the moment and to to enjoy it. Uh, to 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 be focused and to grab all the opportunities that the, uh, their coaches uh, will be given to them. Uh, of course, we, uh, I'm looking forward to see players that we already know that they can perform well, like, for example, Xavi Simons uh, from PSV or even Gapco uh, or the Spanish Gavi, Pedro, Pedri, sorry, even Pedro but he's not is not as young as those that I mentioned, but Pedro from uh, from Flamengo, uh, but uh, uh, Bellingham, uh, Musiala, and some of the Portuguese uh, young talents like Nuno Mendes, for example, that is uh, one of the the greatest young young players that uh, that we have. Uh, of course, Antonio Silva, but uh, I'm not sure if he will start uh, the, in the first eleven. Um, but uh, uh, I, I will say for them to enjoy the moment uh, because these are times, unique times in, in, in their uh, football career. And, uh, and, and of course, if the chance uh, uh, and to, to, to be focused because uh, anything in, in, a, in a second, anything can change. And even if they will not start the games, they, they can be called up at any moment. And I, uh, and I think that they need uh, to understand that uh, um, they they need to be ready if the if the opportunity comes and uh, of course again uh, to to live and enjoy and enjoy the moment because it, these are unique times in, in in their football career. Nuno Gomes, it was an absolute pleasure to have you on an exclusive Breaking the Lines interview today. Anything else you want to mention with regards to FIFA or the World Cup? I think we. We went through to everything, no? I think so. I think it's it's all good.